थैंक यू वेरी मच जय हिंद कस्टमरी इन दिन आर्मी देर वी लाइक टू विश आर ऑडियंस इज जय हिंद इंटरेस्टिंग टू बी हियर in a in a establishment of this nature why are we speaking about kashmir to a to an organization or to a boot camp which is discussing public policy uh you heard in my cv that i speak at the lee kuan yew institute of uh, public policy in singapore um i speak very often on kashmir i speak very often on indian security affairs what is all this got to do with public policy you have to remember at the end of the day that if you are being afforded a chance to do various things in the country in terms of development in terms of pursuit of intellectual power through intellectual studies all this is being enabled by one thing that you are secure if you are not secure none of you will be sitting here none of you will be sitting here over the next 50 minutes or hour or so keep your ears open i can assure you you will not sleep for one i am a loud mouth number one right i have a very observant and keen eye so i will stare at you when you will not be able to sleep right i can assure you and secondly you will find a lot of different things that you have probably never heard of before so let me start straight away by looking at the map no military presentation can begin or end with our maps right it has taken me 2 hours on the internet to download the correct map of india although you google the map everything will be decimated half of kashmir half of axai chin everything axed off maybe jammu kashmir may not be there at all right there is a new legislation on this the geo spatial is a legislation based on geo spatial aspects which says that if you depict the map of india incorrectly you are liable to punishment right and the other day the punjab university we had research scholars we had people doing doctorates and things like that all showing me different different maps with every different shape nothing was correct this is the correct map of india we we'll note this number 2 if i were to ask you where the center of gravity the strategic center of gravity of the world many of you who are aware of global affairs would probably say it lies somewhere in the gulf today all the problems of the world the energy and things like that come from here a lot of people would say it lies in the straits of malacca for the simple reason that 75% of the world's trade shipping traffic moves through the straits of malacca the economics of the world are all decided upon the security of the straits of malacca but for me as an analyst if you ask me where is the strategic center of gravity of the world i'll say it lies here at the pamir knot the pamir knot you have forgotten it probably from your geography days in school it all comes back the pamir knot is right here or is the knot of a range of mountains which comes out why am i saying this for the simple reason in this area there is something which is unknown to most people in india a thing called the new great game which is being played here if you if you uh, google today swaraj.com with my name you will find my blog and you will find this morning's up uploading of an article called india and the new great game based on the visit of prime minister modi to tashkent tashkent the visit to tashkent is all about the new great game what is the new great game well you can't understand the new great game if you don't know what the old great game is right and the old great game was primarily played out in the early part of the 20th century when the russian empire was making an attempt to come southwards and encroach upon the territory of the british empire make access to the indian ocean and try and get a foothold into the jewel in the crown the jewel in the crown was bharat india this game was played out it was a game for spheres of influence it was a game for territory 
security, all kinds of things. The new great game which is happening today is all about the following things. Number one is about energy, it's about infrastructure, right? It's all about ideology, it's all about connectivity. Now if you don't know the new great game, you will never understand what was achieved by the visit of Prime Minister Modi to Tartu, Tehran and the signing of the trilateral India Afghanistan Accord which gives you the access to the Chabahar port and from Chabahar port the access to western Afghanistan and on to Central Asian Republics on to the North-South Highway which takes you on to Russia. If you don't know this, you cannot understand geostrategy. Right? So the new great game is a very important thing. Ideology. Why ideology? Simple thing about ideology. When Daesh, the ISIS, squeezing at the state. moment in Iraq and Syria, the Russians fear that once this is displaced from Iraq and Syria, the next natural place to which it will migrate is Central Asia. Afghanistan and Central Asia. The money is there. What money? Turkmenistan has got the world 70% of the gas reserves here. Turkmenistan. 70% of the world's gas reserves are here. If the Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, pipeline, TAPI, T-A-P-I, TAPI, if TAPI comes through, it's been signed the accord, but we have been denied because Pakistan is being so cussed, if TAPI comes through, 25% of India's gas requirement will be met. You can imagine. That is the kind of importance. And Daesh is looking for getting a hold here, getting a hold here, spreading radical Islam into this region. So that you have a spread of radical Islam from Pakistan, Afghanistan into this complete region. It's all about ideology. Now the question comes, Kashmir se kya matlab hai iska? Itna, itni ram dhani suna di. Why the hell am I telling you all this? Simple. Which is the real estate of India which is the closest to this area? Jammu and Kashmir. Simple. It's a theorem. If Jammu and Kashmir go dedo, give it away. You will find China and Pakistan sitting, you know where? At Pathan Court. You see them, they're sitting there. Pakistanis are here and Chinese are there. Have you thought about that way? All those people who say that Kashmir is not important to India. Kashmir is one of the most important pieces of real estate for India, strategically. And all the explanation I've given you justifies it. So I won't go into further detail, but one small thing will be explained for those who are looking at global studies. Our competition with China. China is building what is called the One Belt, One Road. OBOR. You heard of OBOR? OBOR. $46 billion is being spent on the infrastructure of OBOR, which is going to come through Pakistan to the Gwadar port. Why is China doing it? Simple. China's oil and energy all comes from the Gulf, or it comes from Russia. It mostly comes from the Gulf, through the Indian Ocean, through the Gulf of Straits of Malacca and comes to the eastern seaboard here. One mistake China made years before, in 1978, when Deng Xiaoping, the chairman, when he was designating the priorities for the development of China, he said priority one is technical education. All the IIT people should be thrilled. Technical education, priority one for China. Priority two, agriculture. Agriculture, self-sufficiency in food. Number three, industry. Right? Which means manufacturing. Number four, armed forces. Priority four was armed forces. Now in the armed forces, priority one was people's liberation army. Priority 2 was People's Liberation Air Force. Priority 3 was the People's Liberation Navy. 
biggest mistake if they had reversed it and said people's liberation navy is the priority one today china would have had the same number of aircraft carriers as the united states the same number of submarines to defend this area today they can't defend it they can't combined naval might of india australia new zealand japan united kingdom the united states six countries combined might china can't compete next 30 years so this area is all insecure complete always troubling you so much in the south china sea but this area is all insecure so there's a dev requirement of a development of continental continental routes overland routes and that is why the one belt one road is coming up this is the reason for it primarily okay right so i won't go beyond i can otherwise i can spend two hours on this map with you okay now we come to jammu and kashmir the state of jammu and kashmir the map beautiful map correctly delineated 1994 22nd of february the joint house the joint resolution of the two houses of parliament clearly stated the entire territory of jammu and kashmir which was under the former maharaja belongs to india all parties of this is not a not a bjp not a congress all parties put together joint resolution two houses of parliament has stated it therefore you can do nothing to part with any part of the territory of jammu and kashmir but it's got certain areas northern areas clear a map clear a map northern areas now called gilgit baltistan it is through this area that the one belt one road is being constructed from here along this right you have got this territory of axai chin which has been forcibly taken away occupied by china you have this 5000 square kilometers illegally ceded by pakistan to china is called the shaks gum valley s h a q s g a m shaks gum valley 1963 this is gilgit baltistan this is pakistan occupied kashmir very small portion is pok actually technically this is all pok only but we call all this area as pok nothing wrong with that and this is what is left with us kashmir as a side issue let me also explain this is siachen and siachen is in our hands we are sitting on the saltoro ridge overlooking the pakistanis who are deep on the other side right and every other year you find a lot of people say in the indian army must get out of siachen right it happened in february this year when we had that avalanche when 10 people got buried everyone said kya kar rahe hain yahan par let's get out of siachen <clears throat> today with the one rank one with the what with the one belt one road this is the place from where you are the only only place from where you can oversee one belt one road you can't get out of siachen just can't we are on the higher we are on the heights pakistan is down below if we ought to leave the place and come away on a joint agreement can you trust pakistan that one day they will not come back and occupy that place if they occupy it then the government of india will tell no one but me to go and pick cat capture it back and i will lose 5000 men to do it why should i do it i rather stay put there much better okay for those of you oh no before that purple line line of control loc line of control 750 kilometers green line ib international border no dispute here pakistan still likes to call it wb working boundary they call it working boundary because they think there's a dispute there right and this is called the agpl agpl actual ground position line because there's an undelineated area and this is called here this line is called the lac see lac here see l o 
O C here, they've missed out the O, L O C here, L A C here. This is L A C, line of actual control. So L A C is with China, L O C is with Pakistan here, A G P L is in the Siachen area, I P is the undisputed area, working boundary is what Pakistan likes to call it. So it's huge confusion. Huge confusion. Don't bother about it too much. Right. How many of you have been to Kashmir Valley? Oh, quite a few people. Someone who's never been there, got sent opportunity. See, I'm taking you there. Right? This is a fantastic uh, painting by a photographer from Chandigarh called Sarabjit Singh. A very famous photographer. And he, he just used to take photographs and, pay, and do paintings on them. Right? It depicts what the valley actually is. This is the valley. Jammu is this side. Delhi is this side. Pakistan occupied Kashmir is this side. Right? And for those of you, how many have been to Amanath? Sri Amanathji came. Ah, this is Amanath. I have been eight times. Eight times I have been. Right? And you wonder, sir, aap to musalman ho, aap kyun jate ho waan? Right? Mainne waan pa aat dafe matha taik teka hai. Aur teen dafe, I have been the first man on that year to go and take on my matha there. Because I led it. I led the whole year. Right? Because Amarnath, Amarnath ji gives, gives an army man an inherent energy. It gives him inherent energy. And it's an amazing thing to just trek the 48 kilometers to go from Pahalgam. This is the route you go from, from here, all the way here. This is the way you go. 48 kilometers of walking you do. Acha, let me come back. Valley is formed by the Pir Panjal, the Kishtwar, the Great Himalayan Range, and the Shamshabari Range. This forms. This area was called the Satisar Lake. Satisar. Pura Pani Bharataya. And inside lived a demon. A, 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 a kind of an ogre who used to come out, eat the livestock of the Gujars and go back into the water. The Gujars got fed up. They finally prayed to Lord Shiva. This mythology is Kashmir. Ki. They prayed to Lord Shiva to deliver them from the evil of the ogre. And Lord Shiva came, he took his trident and he struck it. You know where he struck it? Here. At Baramula. The gorge of Baramula. Where he struck, the water started going out. And that is the alignment of the Jhelum River. This. And that is how the valley was formed. And Lord Shiva went back to rest in the holy cave at Sri Amanadji. Right? There are n number of stories on Kashmir. Yes, you go there, it's just fascinating. You go on the internet, keep googling stories of Kashmir and you remember keep out with these kind of things. Haji Peer, you heard of Haji Peer? Haji Peer, can you hear me? My God. Haji Peer. 65, 1965, the war of 1965, the battle of Haji Pir, Vantara, the fascinating Mahavi Chakra battle, one by Vantara, was here. And this is the capture, which was captured back to Pakistan at Tashkent. If Haji Pir was in our hands today, this line would be straight. Now you wonder here, how and why? Shurukasu, why? I'm not going to go into history. I can't be expected to go into history. Because two hours I'm going to explain it to you. But just very briefly, let me explain to you very briefly. What is the meaning of the war of a thousand cuts? Who is this man? Good, great. In the if you were in the Indian Army, you would have got what is called a good observation, right? S. S. Gilani, Sajid Ali Shah Gilani. Al Kashmir ko jana chahte ho, you have to know all these personalities, right? Now let's bring the Pakistan fact. Everything is about Pakistan here first. 47, 
division of India, option given to the Maharaja of Kashmir that you have to decide India or Pakistan. He said, I want independence. His people told him they've got third party, there's no there's no third choice here. Choice is Pakistan or India. Not in a dilemma. The Maharaja was a Hindu. The whole of Jammu and Kashmir put together is a majority Muslim state. So the question was, how, what should he do? Should he go as per his whim to be a part of India? Or should he become a slave to what his people were saying to become a part of Pakistan? Or divide the kingdom? Dilemma. So he asked for what is called a standstill agreement. Which meant that now we have to decide karne to. Standstill. So 15th of August 1947, Baki Sab Division of India was taking place, partition of India. Kashmir ke liye standstill. So standstill sign ho gaya. It was expected that it will take time. One fine day Pakistan decided that no. 22nd of October, there was no Pakistan army at that time. They decided to make use of the tribals. The tribals from Northwest Frontier Province called the Kabbalis. Kabile ke open, Kabila wale. The Kabbalis, they called the Kabbalis made use of the Kabbalis and told them Lashkar Banao which means basically forces, formations of forces Lashkar Banao and get into Kashmir we will capture Kashmir on our own so they made 20-25 Lashkars and they started getting into Kashmir <coughs> 22nd of October they started the first incursion was made here via Uri and they reached Baramula. When they reached Baramula, the Lashkars or the Kabbalis decided to do the pillage or looting of Baramula. Okay, now that we are fighting a war, let us take some reward from it. The rape of Baramula. Even the nuns of the church there were raped. That was the kind of thing to which the Pakistani tribal went. Right? But it came to the rescue of India. The decision to loot Baramula came to the dis came to the advantage of India because on 26th of October, very important date, 26th of October, the instrument of accession was signed by the Maharaja, saying, "I hereby accede Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir to India." Instrument of accession, and once the instrument of accession was signed, 27th of October morning. The Indian army took off in six Dakotas from Palam airport and landed in Srinagar airfield. And that is how Jammu and Kashmir was saved. Just a few men managed to land there. The Kabbalis had not reached Srinagar airfield till then. They were still carrying out the pillage of Baramula. You can imagine how history, in history how things can change events. If the Kabbalis had decided not to rape, not to loot Baramula, they would have got to Srinagar. And we may never have got Kashmir again. But because they decided to do that, the Indian army could get in there and fight our way out of Srinagar. India's first Paramvir Chakra was won on the 4th of November. Kya naam hai? Great, good observation. Somnath Sharma, Four Kumau from my school, Sherwood, Nenital. My school had the privilege of producing the first Paramvi Chakra of India. Also the only field marshal, second, only one of the two field marshals, Sam Manikshaw, right? And uh, Somnath Sharma's memorial still stands at Shelatang. If you get out at, at uh, Srinagar airport, get out, first thing outside you'll feel is the memorial of Somnath Sharma, okay? And that's how the war of 1947-48 fought from 27th of October till almost early part of 1949 when we went to the United Nations and there was a ceasefire 1st of January 1949. All this time the Indian army fought against the Kabbalis, against the tribals, pushed them back and reached the alignment of today's, today's line of control. They reached this alignment. But the Indian army was also not so strong in the sense it was a world war based army. We, didn't, we had already started demobilizing our troops. 
So we could, if given, given six months more, probably we would have captured the whole of Jammu and Kashmir, particularly the area of Gilgit Baltistan to the north. But we could only capture what is with us today. And that was the time when Prime Minister Nehru decided to go to the United Nations. Now, a lot of people have a lot of things to say against the Prime Minister. Let me say that it's easy to say today, but in the context of the times, a decision that time was, it's new nation born. Within three months you are at war. It is draining your economy. What you were want, looking for is peace. And therefore you decided, United Nations, a new international body, peace body has come up. Let's go there and then find a solution. So we went to the United Nations. The United Nations brokered a ceasefire. And uh, thereafter came the Karachi Agreement by which the ceasefire line, the original name of the LOC was the CFL or the ceasefire line, the ceasefire line came into being. And that is how you found the virtual partition of Kashmir taking place. Now, what does the UN agreement say? What does the UN resolution say? This is the most important aspect of the Kashmir dispute, which you must know. The Kashmir, the UN resolution clearly delineates that a plebiscite will be conducted, a referendum will be conducted, but under condition. The condition is that the forces which have committed aggression on the territory of Jammu and Kashmir must withdraw. And then this plebiscite be conducted. Who has conducted aggression on the territory of Jammu and Kashmir? That is a question we like to always ask. Because the instrument of accession signed on 26th of October by the Maharaja of Kashmir legally cedes the territory of Jabun Kashmir to India. And this is what we always claim internationally and in the United Nations. Pakistan on the other hand uses his own thing to say, his own rationale to say that the instrument of accession signed on the 26th of October is illegal. It was signed under coercion with the Maharaja, with a pistol to his head, and was signed there. And therefore it is illegal. Therefore, the plebiscite should be conducted in as is where is position. And since then we have never agreed, we have never accepted. Today what is the situation? Since 1949, Pakistan tried to change the status quo in 1965 through Operation Gibraltar. In 1971, and thereafter in 1999 in the Kargil war. Three times by force. Therefore, India does not accept anything to do with the UN resolution, number one. Secondly, under the Shimla agreement of 1972, signed by Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, by which 93,000 prisoners were given back to Pakistan, it clearly demarcates, clearly says, that this problem is now a bilateral problem. There will be no intercession, no intervention by a third party. And that in due course India and Pakistan will resolve the problem. This is the status today, as it is. Mistakes made, first mistake was going to the UN, very easy to say today in retrospect. 1972, the bigger mistake 93,000 prisoners in your hand and you could not resolve the Kashmir problem. How could a man like Zulfikar Ali Bhutto get the better of a Prime Minister such as Indira Gandhi at that time? Beats us. Something for us to examine. This is, these are the things to research and examine. Right? Thereafter, Thereafter, what happened and how the issue came to a Kashmir insurgency, militancy, which we have been fighting for 26 years, that is the next part of the story. This is the story. Just read it. <clears throat> well, if you, if you ask me, I can even just stop after this slide about Kashmir. It is sufficient. Well, isn't I, what I have told you so far, you will hardly get in textbooks anywhere. Now, now let me tell you. 1972, Shimla Agreement, 
1971-16 December, the victory in Dhaka, the partition division of Pakistan into Bangladesh and Pakistan. No army worth its salt will ever forget a defeat of this kind, where 93,000 prisoners have been handed over to your enemy. Zia, you can see Zia's eyes. Zia's eyes were evil eyes. Right? Look into his eyes, very evil eyes. From 72, the Pakistan army took a back seat. Hari the army hai. Pachhadi the army hai. Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto ruled as a civilian, civilian government till 1977. Enough is enough. The Pakistan army had tasted blood before and they decided to come back to power. Overthrew Bhutto and came to power in 1977. Six years rest for an army is good enough. There was born the diabolic Zia plan. <coughs> what was the plan? Very simple. Retribution, revenge for the loss of Bangladesh, of East Pakistan, against the Indian army. Every Pakistani soldier was made to say in the evening roll call, Dushman, Bharat, Malunga, Badla. Every day it was said. And the plan was simple. Zia was a thinking man. He simply said, Pakistan is unable to match India's conventional army. Too big. Nor is economic strength to achieve any retribution. What Pakistan can definitely do is, it can achieve a parity by going nuclear. 1974, India had already tested the first device in Pokhran. And in 1970, Seven, before that, Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto had said, we will eat grass and we will eat leaves, but we will have the bomb. If you remember. We will eat leaves and we will eat grass, but we will have the bomb. What is, what does a nuclear bomb do? <clears throat> it's not just, yeah, yes please. It, the biggest thing which happens with a bomb, the moment you have a bomb in your hand, a nuclear bomb, is that it sets to rest all conventional asymmetry. I may have one million soldiers and Pakistan has got 300,000, but if he's got a bomb and I've got a bomb, we are equal. Anyone who knows nuclear warfare understands this. Nuclear weapons are not meant to be weapons of war fighting. You don't start throwing nuclear weapons at each other. <laughs> right? You only scare each other. Weapons, nuclear weapons are essentially weapons of deterrence. Essentially weapons of deterrence. So, by going nuclear, right from 1977, the decision to go nuclear, and A.Q. Khan, the scientist, going to Belgium, smuggling out the parts from Holland, putting them together, while the bomb was coming up through the 80s, most of you were not born. Anyone born before they in the 70s or 80s? Oh, one of two of them. Glad. I'm glad you are my generation almost. Right. But right through the 80s, what Pakistan did was an avid game. They kept saying, one day, we have the bomb. The second day, they said, we don't have the bomb. The third day, we said, we have the bomb. And the fourth day, we said, we don't have the bomb. What a wonderful policy. Ambiguity. You see, smart armies, smart security people, smart generals, the one quality they have is they know how to lie. You have to know how to lie with a straight face. You have to say, I bought the bomb. Ten days later, say, I never said I had the bomb. I said, I could have the bomb. So nuclear ambiguity came about. And through the 80s, this nuclear ambiguity became the weapon of Pakistan. Until 1997, when India decided, 1998, when India decided to go in nuclear, Pakistan also decided to go nuclear, and transparently we both became nuclear, right? But parity was achieved. The second thing, to overcome the asymmetry and to carry out retribution, Zia said, we will fight a thousand year war. We will fight a war of a thousand cuts. 
we will make India bleed economically, physically, psychologically. In every dimension, we will make India bleed. It will take years, but we will bleed India. We will exploit India's fault lines. What are the fault lines? Caste, religion, linguistics, regionalism, everything. We will we'll exploit this. This is an element of this diabolic Zia plan. And he started from here. Everything came his way. Number seven, in 1979, two major events happened. The, the, the revolution in Iran. And number two, the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Most important events which came to his assistance. Because of the Iranian revolution, Saudi Arabia felt completely threatened. So they decided that they will finance the bomb of Pakistan. The same time when the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan, the United States decided that Pakistan was the most important state to fight the proxy war in Afghanistan. So they started pumping in money. The ISI became the most experienced intelligence service of the world for 10 years, from 1979 to 1989. The mercenaries, the Mujahideen, who came from all over the world to fight the first jihad, came into Pakistani territory, from Pakistani territory into Afghanistan, and that's where the war was fought. So Pakistan got 10 years of experience of fighting a so-called religious jihadi war. This came to their assistance in a great way, in doing what they have done to Kashmir. I'm only telling you history so far, right? 1987. 1987 to 1991, four crucial years in the history of India. How many of you were born before 1987? Some people were. Great. You, none of you would know. Actually, I realized that my annual and casual leave of my entire service of 40 years may actually be more than your age. <laughs> I think so. But I'm glad that I've got this opportunity to speak to a young generation on issues which are forgotten. 1987 to 1991 is the most crucial period of India's history of since independence. I'll tell you the reason. The, war was, the world was changing. The Cold War was coming to an end. Glasnost, Glasnost and Perestroika in Russia, Soviet Union. Gorbachev had decided that no longer can he compete. Right? The Berlin Wall fell on, in 1989. The Soviet Union broke up in the August of 1991. The republics, the Central Asian republics were formed. The 15 independent republics of the Soviet Union were formed thereafter. Or what is called the Commonwealth of Independent States, CIS. What is happening in India? In 1984, Rajiv Gandhi had come to power on a thumping majority, 440 seats. Sunabini Dhagavi, 440 seats. Within three years, everything was lost. By 1987, the Beaufort scandal broke out. It brought the Rajiv Gandhi government down by 1989. 1987, the elections in Kashmir took place. An attempt was made to meddle with these elections unnecessarily to create a Congress National Conference government. The photograph you saw of Sayyid Salahuddin just now. Sayyid Salahuddin was declared, actually declared elected. But last minute it was overturned and said, no, he is not declared elected. Major, major trigger which we gave in the whole situation in Kashmir, 1987. What else was happening in 1987? India went into Sri Lanka. Four of our frontline divisions of the Indian Army, 100,000 men, were in Sri Lanka, including me, for two and a half years. What else happened in 1987? Exercise brass tax, Operation Trident, the trial, a trial of various measures by General Sundarji of his new doctrines of the Indian Army almost brought India and Pakistan to war. And then came 1989, when you had a new, when you had a, a new government, we be saying government, weak, the Mandal agitation was on, 
and India had foreign exchange reserves of one billion dollars. One billion dollars. By 1991, we were willing to part with some of our gold, right, to pay off for our trade deficit. This was the state of state of the world. This was the state of India. When in the middle of 1989, suddenly the conflict in Kashmir started, and the diabolic Zia plan was executed. Mujahideen declared unemployed from Afghanistan, descended into Kashmir. The line of control became a highway. We had enough troops only to protect the line of control, not to protect every piece of ground and to prevent people coming in. Thousands of people started walking up and down. You seen the movie Heather? Seen the movie Heather? Heather, how did you like Heather? How did you like it? Bad movie? Good movie? No opinion. Heather is a very realistic movie. And I tell my, a lot of people in the army who don't understand it, who don't understand history, they tell me, sir, it's a very bad movie. They've shown the Indian army in very poor light. They've shown us carrying out merciless killing of civilians. I said, so, what happened? And then they can never understand my response. And I say, this is conflict initiation. When a conflict is initiated by your adversary, a proxy war is initiated on your territory by your adversary, and your own population starts supporting that, obviously, someone is going to suffer. We are not playing games. We are at war. Or war may, agar log marenge nahi to kya hoga? Why are you scared of saying anything like that? And I say it openly. The Hadar is a very good movie. It shows the correct picture. But as I will explain to you later, that correct picture and today's correct picture, what is the difference? Okay. Now, 1989, the whole problem started. The whole purpose was to bring India to its knees. Thousand cuts, reduce us, stop us from economically developing ourselves, bring about divisions in our society, bring about communal, communal polarization, bring about all kinds of problems commit the Indian army to Kashmir in such strength that it is not available for any other tasks along the border. All this was the purpose of this. But we have fought for 26 years and we have destroyed terrorism in Kashmir, not terrorism, we have destroyed terrorists in Kashmir. In 1989-1991 there must have been 6,000 to 7,000 terrorists. They managed to spread south of the Pir Panjal into Jammu sector. By 2001, we had to extend our spy into Jammu sector. But today, we have reduced the strength of terrorists to 180. No, 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 no. Have you won the war? Have you won the war? You haven't won the war. Most important understanding is you haven't won the war. So I'll give you another analogy. If you, in 2009, in Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan army was given a total free hand. They were told, go and decimate the LTT. They used tanks, they used air power, they used artillery, every weapon that they had at their hands. The Indian army has never used a tank, never used an air, a aircraft, has never used a helicopter gunship, has never used artillery against our own, own people. We have only used small weapons, AK-47s. Nothing else we have used. Pakistan army today in Northwest Frontier Province is firing all kinds of drones, firing artillery, everything there. Yours is one rare army in the world which fights with his hands behind his back in this manner. The Sri Lankan army went in and destroyed the LTT, killed Prabhakaran. At the end of the day, I always ask this question and I ask this question in Sri Lanka. Has Sri Lanka won the internal conflict against the LTT? And the answer is no. No. Because if you don't know the meaning of victory, the meaning of military victory and the meaning of strategic victory, very different. Militarily you can defeat anyone. At the end of the day, can you achieve a national, a national strategic victory? I keep predicting today, even now as we are talking, somewhere a Prabhakaran is born. Twenty years later, that Prabhakaran will become a leader again. Right? 
and he will lead back the entity again somewhere. Why? Because unless you integrate the people back with you, ultimately everything goes down to the people. ये फौज की बात नहीं है ये फौज की कहानियां नहीं होती हैं अल्टीमेटली द थिंग इज ऑफ द पीपल यू हैव डिस्ट्रॉयड द एंटिटी व्हिच इज द आर्म्ड द आर्म्ड कॉडर्स ऑफ द तमिल्स इन श्रीलंका बट इफ यू हैव नॉट बीन एबल टू गेट द श्रीलंकन सिविलियन द तमिल पॉपुलेशन ऑन योर साइड यू हैव नॉट वन द सेम एनालॉजी हियर व्हेन आई वेंट टू कश्मीर इन 2009 फॉर द लास्ट टाइम Then, sometime last time, when I went back as a corps commander, commanding 15 corps that time, I asked people, "What is my aim?" This, what is your aim? I said, "What is aim? What? If I have been given command of a whole army to command here, if there are thousands or lakhs of troops under my command, what is my intention here? What is my aim here?" No one could clarify to me what my aim is. I don't want to function without an aim. in every military activity aim is the first thing you start with mujhe kya karna hai ye karna hai agar ye karna hai to iske liye mere paas kya cheeze chahiye what do i need to do it do i have it with me for doing that do i have these things do i have the plan do i have the strategy it's a sequential progress process of planning every military operation starts with that no one could tell me what is my aim so i evolved my own aim What was my aim? I said, my aim is to mainstream the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Mainstream, not integrate. Mainstream the state of Jammu and Kashmir with the rest of India, politically, economically, socially, and psychologically. Can you word military? Is it mal hua kahi? मिलिट्री तो नहीं हुआ ना कहीं मिलिट्री बड़ी इस्तेमाल करने की जरूरत ही नहीं पॉलिटिकली इकोनॉमिकली सोशली साइकोलॉजिकली लेट ऑफ कश्मीरी फील दर इज एन इंडियन द डे कश्मीरी स्टैंड अप एंड से जय हिंद आई विल गो इन क्लास फैम लाइक दैट आज हम जीत हो गई हमारी हम लड़ाई जीत गए आज मगर वो कश्मीर कहेगा नहीं क्योंकि आप लड़ाई जीते नहीं है अभी तक ये बात है दैट इज वॉट द रेस्ट ऑफ द प्रेजेंटेशन विच इज स्टिल थर्टी स्लाइज मोर आई विल ट्राई एंड कव इट रिस्ट्रिक्टेड सो इज कश्मीर टर्निंग टू नॉर्मल सी और आई थिंक गेटिंग वर्स यू आर लुकिंग एट द मिलिट्री सिचुएशन यू आर लुकिंग एट द पोलिटिकल सिचुएशन यू रिटर्निंग लुकिंग एट द रिटर्न ऑफ द कश्मीरी पंडित्स दे से विदाउट द रिटर्न ऑफ कश्मीरी पंडित्स हाउ कैन कश्मीर बिकम नॉर्मल आई कैन सी अ लॉट ऑफ फीलिंग पीपल फीलिंग स्लीपी लेट मी टेल यू एज आई गो अलॉन्ग माई वॉइस विल बिकम लाउड Because my energy only doubles when it goes past twelve o'clock, normally. ASPA, Armed Forces Special Powers Act, Article three seventy, governance issues, separatism and radicalism, new militancy, reconciliation. It is not easy, Abhi. Without all this, you cannot understand Kashmir. So let's go forward. Pakistan situation today. Three things. Pakistan today in a nutshell is involved in three things. Number one, most important in priority today is how to arrest its own internal security situation. Tariq e Taliban Pakistan ne maq madam kar diya hai. Kal Amjad Amjad Sabri ko bhi maar diya. Parso, maaroo mein aapko? Amjad Sabri, Amjad Sabri, the great Kawar. 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 Bajangi Bhaijan, the end, the last Kawali. What is the word for Kawali? Marde Jholi. This was originally sung by the father of Amjad Sabri, right? This, the very, very famous Kawali. Usko mar diya because they say he is a Sufi. A Sufi is everything which is Kashmiri. So Pakistani, how can we say that we are Kashmir with the Ishq? When every attempt is being made to take, make to Talibanize Pakistan. So the first priority of Pakistan today is internally stabilize. Number two, stabilize Afghanistan. Because Afghanistan, the Americans are going; they've already left. Five thousand troops are left. 
By 1st of January 2017, there will be no Americans left there. Therefore, it's important to get that space before the Indians rush in there. Third priority is Kashmir. Third priority is Kashmir. Now you can't fight all three things together. Either to Kashmir, or either internally, or in Afghanistan. But Pakistan keeps reprioritizing itself from time to time. And what they do is, every six months, eight months, they say, oh, friendly terrorist is this, unfriendly terrorist is this. Friendly terrorist is Nashkar Taiba, Jaisi Muhammad, who has kept it for India. Tariq Taliban Pakistan is also a, they are against it. It's an enemy. But the, but the Haqqani network of the Taliban and the Taliban networks in Afghanistan are friendly again. So from time to time, Pakistan has to keep switching. Har 6-8 mahine pe, Lashkar wale pohon jate hai ke, Janaab, agar humne kuch nahi kiya Bharat mein, to hawaii to naak bhi, hamaii to naak kar jayegi. 26-11 happened in November 26, 2008. Uske baad se, aaj ta pathan koot pe hua. 2015-16, January of 2016, 7 saal ke baad hua, major strike. Naak to kar gai, lachkar e taiba ki. But the key point that to say, janaap par kushni karne doge, to naak karti rahe ghi hamaari. Sorry? In the middle, Hyderabad, also you have German bakery in Pune. German bakery in Pune, but not to that scale. To just the scale which was Mumbai, right? So, what my, what my whole this thing to illustrate to you is the Lashkar has to be kept happy. If you want to have friendly terrorists with you, you have to keep them happy. That means you have to permit them from time to time to go. Kuch kar kya jau. That is how Pathan Kot happened. Very appropriate time. Narendra Modi ji has gone to Lahore and come back. Peace process is starting. Chalo kuch kar do jake. Let's put all this back. And that's how it happened. Right? So, these kind of events will keep happening with Pakistan. The only thing is that the Indian army has been able to control infiltration in a very big way. What is the military situation today? What is the role of infiltration? There is a very important aspect. And I told you, infiltration ke saath, Insurgency or terrorism is run on a couple of things. Number one, Hathiyar chahiye, Barud chahiye, Manpower chahiye, Terrorist matlab, Cause chahiye, Reason, Paisa chahiye. You put together all these things, you have a lethal combination which can bring about a terrorist situation. Control kallo paise ko, control kallo explosives ko, Hathiyar ko, Control the manpower resources go finished. Terrorism is over. What we have been able to do is we have been able to control the flow of all human resources. How have we done it? Is with the LC fence. Fence ko laya hai. It took 1100 crores worth of money to put the LC fence. Usko laga kar. Night and day vigil 24 7. Every inch of territory is under observation. We have managed to stop the infiltration. This is the mathematics of terror. Till 2003, we were killing on an average 12, 1300 terrorists every year. But infiltration is not going to be done. So, end of the year, what was the thing? You still had those 1200, 1300 plus still. So, every year we were only in the cycle of killing. One fine year in 2003, General Widge was the chief. He decided, let's make a fence. A fence, choti si fence nahi, it's a huge fence. Uske par sab tarai ke sadhan hai, surveillance devices and all kinds of things on it, electrification hai, lighting hai, all kinds of things. And we gave ownership of each part of the fence to different units. Ye tumhara ilaka hai, iske andar se ek parinda bhi nahi niklega. Army ko tab ye bol do na, so then they go mad. Take an officer go mad, the soldiers go even worse. Hey, this is our area. They keep looking at it. This is our area. 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 This is our area.
راتوں دن لگے رہیں گے اس پہ لگے رہیں گے اس کے اوپر اینڈ دیٹ از ہاؤ اوور دا لاسٹ ٹین ایئرز وی ہیو کنٹرولڈ انفلٹریشن ان دا ایئر دیٹ آئی واز دیر کور کمانڈر لیٹ می ٹیل یو پہلے میں کہہ رہا تھا نا آپ کو دو ہزار ڈھائی ہزار ٹیررس انفلٹریٹ کرتے تھے ان مائی ایئر فورٹی ٹو ٹیررس کو انفلٹریٹ فورٹی ٹو دیر واز اونلی فیگر بٹ وی کیل مور دین ہنڈریڈ فورٹی ٹو ہنڈریڈ تو الٹا ہو گیا تھی سچویشن از بیکم ڈفرینٹ بس ہاؤ ٹو ڈے دیر آر اونلی ہنڈریڈ ایٹی ٹیررس لیفٹ دی اونلی ادر ملٹری تھنگ وچ آئی وانٹ ٹو ٹیل یو از اس کو کنٹرول کرنے کے لیے ڈونٹ گو آفٹر آل دیز ریفریف ٹیررسٹ یا ان دے وہ چھ مہینے سے بنا ہوا ٹیررسٹ ہے کوئی سولہ سال کا لڑکا ہے جو ٹیررسٹ بنی ہے گو آفٹر دیر لیڈرشپ وی فوکسڈ آن دا لیڈرشپ ان دا ایئر ان ایئر 2010 11 وی کلڈ 19 ٹیررسٹ لیڈرز 19 of them i used to just say one thing to my men to my officers so and so ye pakistani hai sopor mein hai ye iski tasveer hai ek army of one army officer rr officer one police officer one ib officer one of our own intelligence officers along with two soldiers ye team hai aapki che aadmi ki team hai aap kisi aur terrorist ko nahi dekhoge اگر آپ کے سامنے کوئی اور ٹیرس آ گیا اس کو مارو بھی مت یور ایم از اونلی ون مین دس مین ڈونٹ لوز یور فوکس فوکس رکھو اتنا ہی بس ایسا ٹاسک ملتا ہے نا ہر فوجی کو لیٹ ہی جسٹ کوس ہیمر اینڈ ٹاگ از آفٹر اٹ اینڈ آئی کین ٹیل یو دٹس ایچ ٹیررسٹ نیم وچ آئی فوٹوگراف وچ آئی گیو سکس منتھس واز دا لائف آف دیٹ ٹیررسٹ چھ مہینے چل That is the kind of focus you need. That's the kind of focus which you need. Okay. Now, last. I will go faster. What is the center of gravity? What is the conflict theory? Simple things, let me just explain to you. Har ladai mein, anywhere you have a war anywhere, conflict anywhere, center of gravity is a very important thing to identify. Kate in the Gulf War 1 mein, Uh, when the Americans were going in, in 1990, the center of gravity they identified was the Republican Guard of Saddam Hussein. Republican Guard. You may not even know what the Republican Guard was. Republican Guard was the most important, well-trained element of Saddam's army. I'm, I'm told there are some friends from Israel out here. Who's from Israel? Ah, great. Very nice. Very happy to see that. Someone else from the UK? Somebody else? No one else? Someone else from abroad? Oh, okay. Great. Okay. So, that's the center of gravity. Center of gravity, as per some understanding, is the strongest element of your enemy. If you target that, cut it out, the rest of the whole thing falls. What is the center of gravity? What is the center of gravity of the conflict in Kashmir? As per the Indian Army's identification, the center of gravity of the conflict in Kashmir is the people of Kashmir. Kashmir ki awam is the center of gravity. Why? If you, if you get the sense, awam on your side, if every Kashmiri says, Main to Bharat ka نواسی ہوں میں بھارت کو پیار کرتا ہوں جائے ہند کون سا ٹیررس آکل رہے گا that is the center of gravity I went back and did one more thing I said ٹھیک ہے this is the physical center of gravity in everything there is the abstract center of gravity the abstract center of gravity کیا ہے یہاں we identified the abstract center of gravity as the idea of آزادی یہ آزادی کا جو جشن جو ہے نا یہ جو آئیڈیا ہے دماغ میں اس کو کیسے دور کر سکتے ہو اف یو کین انٹیگریٹ دا پیپل ایوری ون وتھ یو سے آپ آزادی کیوں چاہتے ہو دیکھو بھارت کو دیکھو تو ادھر دیکھو پاکستان میں کیا ہو رہا ہے بھارت کو دیکھو سیون پوائنٹ نائن پرسینٹ گروتھ تھری پوائنٹ ٹو پرسینٹ گروتھ فیوچر کیا ہے پاکستان کا فیوچر کیا ہے انڈیا کا دیکھ لو آپ ٹھیک ہے اکنامکس میں بچوں کا نیکسٹ جنریشن What is the future of the next generation? See here. See the advent of technology here. We may have lost the LSG debate today. Doesn't matter. 
ایک سال ڈیر سال کے اندر ہم ایل ایس جی میں تب بھی گز جائیں گے دنیا کے اپنی سسپیکس آس ایل ایشن وٹ آئی لکی ایر پاکستان فور آزادی وٹ آئی لکی ایر آزادی انڈیپینڈنس سی وٹ آر دا سٹیٹس آف سو منی ادر کنٹریز لوک ایٹ سینٹرل ایشیا لینڈ لاکڈ ایریاز وٹ آر دا فیوچر آف دوز ایریاز ہاؤ ٹو کنونس دا پیپل یو ہیو ٹو سٹ ڈاؤن اینڈ ڈبیٹ ٹیررسٹ کو مارو جس نے ہتھیار اٹھایا چھوڑو مت وہ جو عوام ہے بیٹھو کنونس کرو It is called changing the narrative, countering the narrative, and you are, yeah. Number of people who turn up for the wakes of rebels nowadays in Kashmir. The funeral of the rebels. Yeah, the yeah. funeral. Yeah. It has increased considerably in the past two years, uh, and now if uh, reports... Okay, like, okay, yeah. okay, 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 I understood your question. Good question. She's saying that today on the few, at the funerals, Of the, of, the, of the terrorists, Pakistani terrorists, double the number of people who used to ever turn up before, turn up at the funerals of these places, people. Right? So if it goes on like this, Kashmir will go out of our hands. Young lady, only one thing I'll say. The day Kashmir goes out of the hands of India, that day I'll hang myself to death. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that. Let me explain. Let me explain to you. You've got an army of 1.3 million people. There's no son of anyone who can take Kashmir from India. I will tell you that. No one. That's why there's a popularity thing. Be rational. Let's, let's be rational. Your question is a very... I am only giving... Now let me give you a rational answer. I'll give you an irrational answer so far. And generals are not supposed to be irrational. Right? They're supposed to be rational thinking people. So let me give you an answer. Your question is absolutely 100% right. Your question is rational. Your question is rational. So let me give you an answer. You are absolutely 100% right. Which is what I'm saying that we have not won the war. We have destroyed the terrorist. We have not destroyed terrorism. We still have not destroyed terrorism. Because the Kashmiri still thinks that he is different. You all didn't see the debate day day before yesterday on NDTV. I was there on the debate. Barkha ke saath. And this question was coming again. This question was coming. Barkha was doing an outstanding program, let me tell you. What a program she did on Kashmir in the last three days. Right? going into the deep into the villages and getting to understand the meaning of the Sanic colonies. I'll give you the answer, answer to that. But let me tell you the last bit of it. The sentiment continues to run against India. No doubt about it. I'll be telling a lie if I tell you that can any, everyone is in support of us. No. The sentiment runs against us. We have militarily won the thing. Military situation totally under control. Infiltration totally under control. Last IED, by the way, this morning one IED was discovered in, uh, near the airport. Today, 5 kg IED. But the last IED which was blasted in Kashmir was on 20th of July 2008. Uske baad IED so, situation is under control. You can control the physical dimensions of everything. You can't control the mind. Now, winning the mind is the most important aspect. If you remember my aim, I said, mainstream, mainstream the state of Jammu and Kashmir politically, economically, socially, psychologically. Psychological part. We are a weak state psychologically. We, India. <coughs> Pakistan set up in 1949 the Inter-Services Public Relations, ISPR. Take it. How many of you, of you have seen the tweet going around saying that the Indian defense attaché in Kabul carried out a rape of a girl who came to take a visa from the Indian embassy? How many of you have seen it? Are <coughs> you out of touch with the world? Right? There's a tweet going around. There's a WhatsApp going around. It's all in the Pakistani media. 
saying India's defense attache, a brigadier in Kabul, a Afghan girl went to take a visa from the Indian embassy for visiting New Delhi. She was raped by the Indian defense attache and that he has been thrown out of Afghanistan. And let me come back to this. 1949, the in Inter-Services Public Relations Wing was set up, ISPR. What was their work? Their work was only How to generate lies about India? Number one. I told you, no, lie. war is all about lying. A man who is truthful can't win a war. It's all about deceit. It's all about, you ask my Israeli friend, whether Israel ever fights straight? You think you're going to fight straight? Israel is never going to war by fighting straight. You have to. Israel has gone into Dubai and killed the famous terrorist leader Mashal in the hotel. Exactly. You did it. No. In India, we have not set up an organization such as ISPR till 2016. Because we are a straightforward, honest nation of simple people who feel that all we need is our economic might to function as a nation. Not realizing at the end of the day we've got enemies all over and we have to use all kinds of means to win these kind of wars which keep coming up from time to time. Right? Which means therefore we have to use the psychological domain to a far greater degree today. Social media. Now, if if Pakistan ISPR can throw out a tweet to say this is what has happened to the Indian Army DA, what prevents us from throwing out 2,000 such tweets every day? But we don't have the means to do it. Last night I was sitting with some very important people only discussing this. That we need to do it now. We have to do it ultimately. We have to put it out. We have to take the battle to the mind of the adversary and we have to take the battle in a very positive way to the mind of the population of Kashmir to tell them that they, they are a part of India and they are not different to us in any way. Yeah, your question. Kashmir, after talking to a localite, he said that Afspa, not being accountable or questionable to anybody, have not only been like gang raping their women, thieving them and like like Good. doing all kind of atrocities on them, they not only hate the army, they say that we neither belong to Pakistan nor to India, we are Kashmiri and that's why they always keep focusing on the fact that we want to be a separate state. Azadi. I want to need, so I want to know the other part of the story, like this is their version of the story. Okay, very, very good, very good. I'm glad you're bringing out something. Don't bother about the presentation, we can just skip over it, right? But you're bringing out a very important part. If I go back to Kashmir today <coughs> and uh, Ask people, what's troubling your mind? Most people will tell me, the atrocities by the Indian Army. So I'll ask a man in the street, okay, what have you heard? When was the last atrocity you heard? He said, oh, Konan Pushpura. I said, Konan Pushpura, the 1991. He said, so Patribal, Patribal happened on 25th of March 2000, the year when Clinton came, when he was addressing the Parliament, that year it happened, that month it happened. They say, he starts thinking, next, next one he can't think about. They say, is government, what was government? Suna tha. Suna tha. Then the Kashmiri media will come out. What happened to Quran Pushpura? What happened to Patribal? What happened to Machal? I can give you answers to all. I'll tell you Quran Pushpura. Quran Pushpura asked me, a investigation team of the PTI, Went from here, the Trust of India, under the leadership of B.G. Vargas, editor Hindustan Times, media. After all, media is supposed to be a, a, a political, completely, right? Went, investigated, and said, uh, we don't understand how this complaint started from the rape of four women, and it has now reached 40 women. We thought four women were raped. But now it is saying 40 women were raped. Over a period of 20 years, every year the number kept increasing. All those who are studying law, remember that. Okay. I can tell you another story. 19th of July 2011, I got a report 
Kulgam is burning. I said, why is Kulgam burning? They said, they are saying that a woman was raped by two RR soldiers. So I spoke to the DG police, what's happened? He says, we really don't know, but this woman has come and complained, saying that two RR soldiers kidnapped her, and they raped her, and then they left her somewhere. So the police carried out a full investigation. Ultimately, this woman broke down. What had happened? Which always happens in conflict zones. She had a fight with her husband. Number one. She said, I'm going to, I'm going to my parents. So I'm going to my, I'm to my parents. So she started walking to the mountains. She met a shepherd who said, where are you going? She said, I'm going to my, back to my home. She said, where is your home? So and so place. Oh, it's 100 kilometers away. How do you go? So I didn't think of it. You better go home, he told her. She said, I can't go home because I fought with my, my in-laws. I fought with my husband. He says, don't worry. Just say that you had gone out of the house for some time. And army soldiers came and picked you up. They raped you. And they detained you for so many hours and now you have come. So she went and told the story. The parents, the in-laws were livid. They took her to the police station. The police station registered an FIR. By the time the message went out on the police station networks, Kulgam was burning. Buses were burning, scooters were burning, cars were burning. What I'm trying to say is, in insurgency situations, militancy situations, situations of terror, manipulation is the key word. Manipulation is the key word. Someone, if you ask a Kashmiri, what happened in Machal? He said, oh yes, very bad encounter. The army kidnapped some young boys, took them, killed them, and those army men have gone scot-free. Have you heard what happened in Machal? I caught court martialed them. All six of them are on life imprisonment today. The people who were involved. Why I am saying is information. Information is power. Today is the age of information. Today is the age of social media. He who controls information controls the situation. And this is something we as a nation are very weak at. So don't get... If you go to Kashmir today and start reading the morning media, incidentally in Kashmir, 30 English newspapers are published every day. Not so many in Delhi. 30 English newspapers. And Urdu newspapers more, even more. And everything will carry an anti-India story every day. But yet, see the democracy of India. See the power of democracy in India, where everyone is allowed to do it. No one is holding anything back against them. See, there are people who are drawing salaries from the government of India, functioning as professors in Kashmir University, are writing anti-India articles in the Kashmir media. Are you allowed to do that? You can't draw a salary from the government of India if you write articles like that, legally. Yet, we allow them to do it. We are, we are a magnanimous country. We are a magnanimous state. And that is the strength of India, if you ask me. That is the strength of India. Because all this which is happening that Pakistan is doing today to us, all of this will travel back to them. It's only a question of time. We are now getting into a hurry. We are now getting a little impatient on it. But let me tell you as a population, an educated public like yours out here, need to just understand the situation. And not get misled by all these things. You just keep saying keep this because you will know that these are the issues which are important. If you want me to discuss any of them, I'll do it. Rational Rifles, just to tell you, the finest military experiment in the world on insurgency is the raising of the Rashtra Rifles. 63 battalions have been raised. Belonging to the army, they are permanently in Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir, and they are the ones who have actually controlled this whole issue of terrorism there. What is new militancy? New militancy is all happening in South Kashmir. Now that only 180 terrorists are left, North Kashmir is quiet. Jammu, Rajori, Punch is quiet. Only South Kashmir, Anantanag, around Anantanag. This is the area where a young militancy, militancy led by 21-year-olds, is today thriving. 60 to 70 young people who are not under the control of Sayyid Salahuddin. But they are radically oriented and I've got a religious mindset who keep talking about Daesh, ISIS, transnational radical Islam and things like that.
that is the only dangerous element about it otherwise 60 to 70 terrorists in South Kashmir is not a threat to the Indian army on the political angle let me tell you personally I am very happy I was very happy when I found that the BJP and PDP put together put their act together reason can't just start saying something like that without having a reason reason the political empowerment of Jammu and the political empowerment of Srinagar put together on a balance is the best thing which can happen to Jammu and Kashmir. Number one. Unlike the government of Mufti Saeed one year ago, one and a half years ago, which started on the wrong footing by putting up, throwing up all kinds of issues, this government has shown a lot of maturity. Three months has been in power now. Not once has the issue of Article 370, AFSPA or anything come up. Let me tell you, I... If someone asks my advice, I give my advice. And my only advice to the government of Jammu and Kashmir was, and it still is, ek saal, do saal, ye sab cheezo ko chhod do. Only, only, only focus on development. Give one good winter to the people of Kashmir, followed by a second good winter, and I can assure you, much of this issue will be forgotten. What do I mean by a good winter? जो रहा है कश्मीर में विंटर में उसको मालूम होगा पावर नहीं आती शाम को ठीक है बर्फ पड़ जाएगी बनिहाल पे यू विल नॉट गेट ट्वेंटी डेज रोड इज क्लोज दूध नहीं सब्जी नहीं बेबी फूड नहीं दवाएं नहीं यहां तक के थर्ड डे आई टू गेट अ कॉल फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट से कुछ गैस सिलेंडर आर्मी दे सकती है हमको आर्मी एक बिकम गैस सिलेंडर प्रोडक्ट प्रोड्यूसर ऑल्सो देर We give gas cylinders also to people. Okay, हमने हमने रखे हैं अपने लिए ठीक है आप आपको दे देते हैं थोड़े से. What is the meaning of governance? I used to ask people कि आपने मेरी गाड़ियाँ देखी हैं ऊपर नीचे पूरे छः आठ महीने पागलों के तरह मेरे ड्राइवर चला रहे हैं कहीं लदाख कोई ऊपर है धर उधर क्या कर रहे हैं? All they are doing is they are stocking. They are bringing आटा दाल चावल चीनी तेल गैस and dumping it. जब जरूरत पड़ेगी हम इसको खाएंगे आप क्यों नहीं करते हो ये ये 20 दिन में क्या होता है सत्तर साल से हो रहा है ये सत्तर साल का जो तजुर्बा है वाई डू पुट टू ग्राउंड एंड स्टॉक अप योर थिंग्स ये नो वन एज थॉट अबाउट इट दिस वॉट यू कॉट गवर्नेंस नाउ आई होप आई होप दिस गवर्नमेंट विल गेट इन टू इट एंड डेवलप ऑल दिस दो विंटर अच्छे दे दो आवाम को कंफर्टेबल कर दो यहां तक कि आई कैन टेल यू in the winter of 2011 and 12 high levels of snow in the army my soldiers brought down eight women from heights of 11 12 thousand feet women who were in the family way we brought them down aur koi nahi la khaat ke upar khaat ke upar akela hai stretcher ke upar khaat ke upar baraf ke andar dala dala ke apni dandiya we brought them down all of all lived all delivered the children safe and sound and for a simple example of development the power nahi hota modern zamana hai the first thing which happens is people like you cannot communicate why you can't charge your mobile you can't charge your mobile how do you communicate imagine now all of you suddenly say power nahi hai communication nahi hai what do i do this is mod the modern world in 2011 power ran out no one could charge the mobiles srinagar ke andar the cost of a mobile charge by a generator was 75 rupees per charge black marketing of charging have you ever heard of black marketing of charging <laughs> i got this report black marketing ho rahi charging ki i was livid absolutely mai ab koi baat nahi forge isko bhi kar degi we made मल्टीपल चार्जिंग फैसिलिटीज रातों रात ट्रक्स के अंदर हमने जेनरेटर रखे एंड चराहों के ऊपर हमने गाड़ियां रखी आओ चार्ज फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट प्लीज पुट योर चार्जिंग एंड देट इज होप यू सर चार्जिंग एवरी वे एंड वी गॉट रेड ऑफ द ब्लैक मार्केट इन बिकॉज ऑफ दिस यू नो यू हैव टू थिंक आउट ऑफ द बॉक्स ऑल द टाइम ऑल द टाइम एंड इफ यू आर कमिटेड यू आर कमिटेड टू गवर्नेंस यू आर कमिटेड टू द पीपल यू विल डिलीवर ऑलवेज डिलीवर last bit in the year 1990 when the indian army was called in 1989 when the indian army was called into kashmir 
we went in the situation was law and order now law, lawyers lawyers pay attention situation was law and order but suddenly we saw that this position was changing from law and order to public order and order is a problem like the jad agitation was it threatening the, the integrity of india no it doesn't threaten the integrity of india india is not being torn apart by uh, agitation in haryana or in maharashtra or in <coughs> gujarat no but an agitation a situation in the streets which is threatening to tear india apart which is threatening to take away a portion of our territory is not a law and order situation the jad agitation is law and order situation but that agitation which is taking away a part of india is not a law and order situation it is a public order situation and law and order is handled by the police public order is handled by the army law and order ko handle karne ke liye army is requisitioned requisition goes comes the army comes the magistrate says so wo problem hai wahan par army says aap sign kar do iske upar wo sign kar dete hain requisition we will go and sort out that problem now okay sort out kiya problem aa gaye ab bataiye aur kahan jana hai this is called law and order a to civil authority a to civil authority as per army act but a public order situation is completely different is terrorism is going on i am not going to go to the magistrate and say janab bataiye kya karna hai and the, if the magistrate tells me ke sir aap udhar mat jana aap idhar hi jana main idhar hi ke liye sign kar raha hu I, i'll put him in his in his back side you the public order situation hai there a terrorist act taking place there you think i am going to go there i'll go there i am in control i am in charge now what are the legal framework in india two things only which you require for the army to function one is you require empowerment to go into a situation without taking requisition from a civil magistrate i require that number two if any of my men commit a mistake by somehow and the uh, someone a civilian dies i can't stop prosecuting that man for that mistake is not by he not done it deliberately so he has needs protection he needs legal protection anywhere in india you go the crpc gives this protection and empowerment to the army protection in the sense none of my men can be prosecuted without reference to the central government the state government can't start prosecuting my men but in jammu and kashmir this can't be done because jammu and kashmir ka the constitution hai as you are aware there is a different constitution it says that there is a ranbir penal act rpc the ranbir penal court under rpc not crpc i don't have the protection and i don't have the empowerment so what do i do how do i function in jammu and kashmir so i need afspa armed forces special powers act enacted on 4th of july 1990 in a hurry drafted in a hurry the language which was of those days which conveyed the meaning clearly go if you have to if you have to destroy a terrorist base you have to kill people extent of going to kill people destroy the locks destroy the explosives do this do that very very strong harsh language 1990 was not the days of human rights today is the days of human rights from 1990 till 2006 no one people said no one said any said about aspa suddenly everyone said the aspa is a draconian law it draconian kya hai isme it's only empowering me and protecting me but yes in so many words it is saying that i am allowed to kill i am allowed to destroy i am allowed to maim it is saying all that that's what aspa is all about and today <coughs> they saying aspa is draconian isko hatao i should have been battling this perception of it being called a draconian law for the last 10 years i should have been battling the perception media mein likhna chahiye tha yahan likhna chahiye tha debate karna chahiye tha ndtv ke upar times now ke upar we never did it we are a simple we are a simple set of people 
The army didn't do it. So we have lost the perception battle. Aaj Aspa ka naam lo sab kehte hain Indian army. Villains. Rogue army. So my suggestion only is today we still need Aspa. So if you need Aspa you may like to reenact the whole Aspa into a very simple document. Very simple document of only two sections, five lines with 20 pages of explanatory notes to say how the Indian army functions and how it humanizes conflict. Humanization of conflict is a different dimension that we have followed. Sadbhavna and all kinds of things like that. Winning hearts and minds of people, all kinds of things like that, which most armies around the world don't do. Okay. Now rush to the slides. I have already spoken about this. Sadbhavna. Sadbhavna. Just see what is the example of Sadbhavna. This year, I, I, IIT people, Sullo. Yeah. 30 people taken out from Kashmir, selected, trained at the behest of the army, paid for everything. And how many? 18 or 19 of them have been selected for IITs this year. Now, give this task to the army. We will take this task. Next time, we'll double it. I can assure you, in three years, we will train 100 kids in 100 kids. You give this task to the army, the army will always do it in that manner. This is Sadbhavna. Typical Sadbhavna. This is winning hearts and minds. Four dimensions are medical, women empowerment, education, national integration. National integration means 130 tours I used to send all over India of young people. I carried out a tournament in 2011 called Kashmir Premier League. Cricket. Cricket is a, is a passion in, in Kashmir. And we played 390 matches. Professional. Absolutely. Bishan Singh Bedi came as the advisor on that. You know how much money I spent? 1.5 crore rupees to play 390 matches. When I asked Bishan Singh Bedi how much would BCCI spend? He said 1,000 crores. 1,000 crore lagega. But what was the purpose of playing? We wanted to produce a cricketer from Kashmir. Parvez Rasool ne kal diya humne. We took out Parvez Rasool from there. He played for India. We kept 400,000 people committed to cricket. Listening, watching, cheering, television, playing, discussing. Jo log sadkon ke baad patthar phek rahe hote, wo cricket dekh rahe the. You have to use the brain to do this. The way you have to use the brain to do this. Visiting the Kheer Bhavani temple along with the Kashmiri Pandits. This is the photograph. Put out in the media, it's a perception management. Conveying the message, see, Sufiyat, Kashmir ka tradition was always this, ke bhai chara, all religions together. Seconds to tell you, Sufi, Sufism was the religion of Kashmir, overtaken by Wahhabiyat. And this was Pakistan's diabolic plan. Bring the Wahhabi element into Kashmir and over the last 25 years, let me tell you, more than 800, 900 old Kashmiri mosques have all become from Sufi to Wahhabi. All the old um, Kashmiri Malvis and clergy have disappeared and you find clergy from all over northern India, UP, Bihar, who are now there. I won't speak more on that. Hankot, why Gurdaspur? It becomes very difficult to come to Anantanag, Srinagar, infiltrate over the mountains. Army hi army lagi hai taraf. To come and do something at Srinagar airport, Avantipur airport is impossible. To do something in the area of Punch Rajori, you don't have the large targets which can give you that kind of impression. Look at Pathankot, distance of Pathankot from the border, 20 kilometers. Infiltrate. Catch hold, make use of the drug menace in Punjab, Urta Punjab, dekho. see the drug menace of Punjab, make use of the drug conduits, infiltrate, get on this road, here road, this is the road I was talking about, this road, 10 kilometers away from the border, hijack a vehicle, 
رات کے تین بجے یور اسکوپ ٹو موو از ففٹی سکسٹی کلو میٹر ان دا نیکسٹ تھری آورس اینڈ یو گوٹ اے چوائس آف ٹوینٹی ٹارگیٹس مائی وارننگ وچ آئی آلویز گیو کاپی بک ٹیررزم دا لشکر لاسٹ ٹو ڈو کاپی بک ٹیررزم تحریک طالبان پاکستان نے آرمی پبلک اسکول پہ حملہ کیا ہنڈریڈ فورٹی چلڈرن کلڈ سم وے ان دا مائنڈ آف اے ڈیویس پلانر of the lashkar e taiba will be to less attack an army public school in India. It's 10.58. If you have the stamina, I have all the stamina to answer your questions. I cannot show you. Uh, all while working in Kashmir, you introduce programs like Ji Janab uh, to uh, enhance the relationship between the locals and the army. Uh, currently, a very important issue in Kashmir, which uh, many of us do not talk about, is the psychological turmoil that people in general are going through, and uh, depression runs large, and it's all mostly it goes undiagnosed. So, uh, what sort of an approach or uh, uh, steps can the army, can the government uh, take in this regard? Okay, one question. I uh, why, uh, in proportion to their population, the Muslims of India are very underrepresented in army and what can be done about it? Okay. okay. Uh, intelligence agencies of India, like raw... Intelligence agencies of India, how do they function in Kashmir? Okay. I'll just take these three questions. First, your question on the Muslims of India. Of representation. The army is the only organization which has no reservations. Right? No reservations. But, but we have our own form of what is called regional representation through what is called the recruitable male population index. Which means that Madhya Pradesh may have a territory which is huge, but the recruitable male population in terms of the youth between 17 years and 25 years is limited. So the number of vacancies Madhya Pradesh will get in the Indian Army will be less. Tamil Nadu may have a much higher, 17 to 25, the population base of Tamil Nadu may be very high, so they will get more vacancies. This is how it works on the representation legally. On religion, there is no, no this thing at all. But we have a traditional system that many of our units have a class composition. For example, where do the Muslims Let's talk about the Jawan level. First, then we come to Afsa. Where do the Jawans, Muslim Jawans, where, where do they go? They go to the Rajputana Rifles, the Rajput Regiment, the Grenadiers, the Guards, Jammu Kashmir Rifles, Jammu Kashmir Light Infantry. These are the regiments, right? In some of these regiments, you have pure companies of Muslims. In some of the places, you have mixed. The company can have Sikh, Dogra, Muslim, Jat, everyone together, right? Now, where you have a company of, let's say, um, the seven Jammu and Kashmir rifles, which has got two companies of Dogras, one company of Gurkha, and one company of Punchi Musliman. So you will have people only from Punch Rajori who can go into that. Depends on the vacancy pattern that is created in that company. So every year there may be 10, 12, 15 people who can enter into that company. So they are recruited from there. So as such, if you go by proportional representation of the Muslim population, I think the Jawan Kada is well represented. Not a problem. Come to the Officer Kada. Officer Kada, the story is different. No reservation. No class composition. It is all India civil services exam kind of a thing. Everyone says, writes the CDS exam. 50% from Tamil Nadu, 25% from Haryana, and rest of the country may not get represented. Or it can have equal representation everywhere in a particular year. So it's a matter of chance. Okay. But by this matter of chance, it's a question of how many people take this exam. And that you are 100% right. That there aren't enough Indian Muslims who are motivated enough to think that they have a chance to become officers of the Indian Army. Today the social media, <coughs> the internet, is enhancing this opportunity because role models are being thrown up. And I dare say, I am a role model in that. Where they say, oh, this guy in Kashmir, he was the core commander. How come he was a, he's a Muslim? How did the Indian government appoint a Muslim as a core commander there in Kashmir? 
कहते भाई हमारा भी चांस है वी कैन डू वेल इफ यू आर कॉम्पिटेंट वी कैन डू वेल एंड इन द इंडियन आर्मी वन थिंग इज देर इफ यू आर कॉम्पिटेंट यू विल डू वेल इफ यू आर कॉम्पिटेंट यू विल डू वेल तुमको नो वन विल ब्रिंग यू डाउन सम पीपल मे पुश यू अप नो वन विल ब्रिंग यू डाउन कॉम्पिटेंट पीपल विल ऑलवेज यू रिस्पेक्टेड इन द आर्मी दस वन थिंग द अनफॉर्चुनेट थिंग इज there isn't enough there aren't enough people who have gone and spoken down to the people of to the muslims of india it is people like me who are at fault today i'm trying to make up for it one of my hobbies is to go and speak in schools and colleges all over i do this every every other day i do it and i go and speak on the indian army to tell people that here the profession is open to you Do you do you find any of you will find a fault in my diction, my capability, my articulation, my education? You can't. You call an IS man, I'll beat him hollow on it, any time. Right? I can debate with any foreign service, any IS, any man you call. I can debate with him on any subject to the world, whether it be economics or psychology or military affairs or anything. So I say, okay, देखो भाई, if you are competent, you will be able to achieve it. Right? Let me come to your question on intelligence, and I'll come back to that. Intelligence, intelligence agencies, raw, raw actually has no role in Kashmir. Raw is external, but it's got an office in Kashmir. It's concerned about POK. It's concerned about Gilgit Baltistan. It's concerned about China. Intelligence external, their job. The more important people in Kashmir are the IB. The more important people in Kashmir. to my mind the most important intelligence agency in kashmir is the local cid they have the best intelligence and hats off i i of a salute one organization with whom i have worked jammu and kashmir police no one salutes them no one recognizes them no one understands that the most difficult job is the job of a policeman in kashmir army wale to tab bhi saath saath rehte hain police wala to ikka dukka you see the number of policemen getting killed anand the policemen traffic policemen getting killed these days in south srinagar intelligence of the police is the best someone recently said announcement somewhere that the army will function on its own it does not want to have the police with it because after the handwara incident let me tell you if an, if a if a commander of the army ever says this he is an unprofessional chap because the army cannot divorce itself from the police intelligence is only with the police army ke paas koi intelligence nahi hai all information is with the police they are the one who give you come with you show you and we are the ones who act and operate on that right no broadly this is this is the you see idea of oh a war like situation a conflict situation always leads to trauma conflict of any kind is a traumatic experience you have to live in a conflict zone to understand how traumatic an experience it is if you have to go from sonipat to panipat distance kitna hai how much is the distance 25 kilometers 30 kilometers i don't know maybe 30 40 kilometers okay 40 kilometer ke distance mein if there are six checkpoints and at every checkpoint there's police and army sitting together and at every checkpoint your car You find a policeman comes with a danda and maros on your car. Thak. Dent ho jayega. You object. He says, "Bad job, bad job." Take it. Zada baat mat karna. You sit down. Cowering, you sit down. Paper dekho. Paper dekhaya. Utro, utro. Dekhaya. Card search ki. A jaga ho gaya. Second checkpoint. Within five kilometers, one more checkpoint. Same procedure. Gali khao. Paper dekhao. Danda ho. Can you imagine that you live in this environment for 25 years of your life, which you are you are, you are 25 years old, and you live for 25 years in this environment? What is going to happen to you? You are going to hate the face of the army. You are going to hate the face of the police. Okay. And I have sat at the Israeli checkpoint also. I have sat at the Israeli checkpoint in Jerusalem. Let me tell you, it's worse there. It's much worse there. because it's only a small nation and they have to secure themselves i don't blame you at all but i am only giving you an explanation of trauma psychological scars in the minds of people 
Conflict is associated with jack boots. Conflict is associated with the midnight knock. Conflict is associated with checkpoints. Conflict is associated with every kind of population control measure which can prevent the population from exercising freedom. It's a compulsion that you have to do in a conflict situation. But then it has, a, it has an effect on the population. It, has a, it has, leaves scars. It leaves scars not on your body but on the mind. What do you do? The answer is what do you do? Let me tell you that I can only give you my example that I went back as a co-commander. I said applying theory of conflict. Conflict initiation 89, 90, 91, 92. What we were doing, Heather, shown in Heather, was okay at that time. Today's conflict transformation. We have come through conflict initiation, conflict progression, conflict stabilization. We are now in conflict, conflict transformation. What you did in 91 can't be done today. What you are doing today can't be done in 91. If you are a smart army, if you are a smart security establishment, you will make sure that those very scars which you are talking about, those scars have to be filled. Those that trauma has to be overcome. How do you do it? Because the army is not trained to do it. Your police is not trained to do it. For 25 years they only know how to use that stick. So you start training your men. And start talking to your men. Start talking to your officers. And you have resistance at every stage. <coughs> it took me one year of speaking. Every other day I would ask my staff, how many men are there in my core battle school? They said 5,000 men. Today I would go and speak to those 5,000 men. And explain to them three hours how conflict has changed in Kashmir. And how we need to move on. Therefore checkpoint culture has to change. When, when we started explaining the mechanics of all this to the people, the Indian soldier is very bright. He started understanding it. Finally, my, my prize came the day when I got a call from a journalist of Indian Express called Muzammil Jalil. He rang me up from a checkpoint near Bandipur and said, what have you done in Kashmir? I said, tell me, what have I done in Kashmir? He says, I am talking to you from a checkpoint. I have gone past this checkpoint for the last 15 years. Every time without fail they have dented my car with a stick. They have abused me. They have always made me get down here. They know who I am despite that they have always disgraced me. So I said, so what's different today? He says, today they stopped me and said salam walekum to me. I said, why? What's that? So what's, how what's happened? He said, then I wrote on my window and they gave me a cup of tea. So I said, so? And then they asked me permission, can, can they search my car? I says, he says, I got down. I said, please search my car the way you want to. I'm having my tea. So he drank his tea. So I said, no, so what's your question? He says, what have you done to Kashmir? How has it changed? I said, I've only spoken to my men for the last one year. And today you're giving me the first feedback of the effect of that which is traveling down. You see, it's someone, someone has to go back and make a difference. I used to always say, my biggest adversary, my biggest enemy is not Pakistan, not ISI, not the terrorist. My biggest enemy is my own soldier who was here 20 years ago. Whose mind is still there and says, In Kashmir, ko ko hum maza if he says that, if he's got that in his mind, then how can you overcome this conflict? I hope that is that one special thing about Indian Army or Pakistan Army, where in the other part they were always trying to claim, uh, get onto the chair of president and take over the nation, and you are confined to your job of national security. Second part, sir. Is there any references from you in terms of books, movies, or no. uh, documentaries on war strategies? I am so particularly interested in war strategies. Atahasman, gmail.com. Come back to me on this aspect of movies, war, any journals, stories, etc. I will give you a whole library. You, all your life you can read that. <laughs> right? Number one. The difference, sheer difference between the Indian Army and the Pakistan Army. 
I happen to meet Pakistani army generals every three months. I am a part of the track two process with Pakistan, backroom, backroom channels. We speak to the Pakistan army in Bangkok, Colombo or other places, right? So I meet them every three months. I know the mind of the Pakistan army very well. This I can tell you, one of the things which happened to Pakistan was, Pakistan's army has never been apolitical, number one. Pakistan is a feudal state, number two. In India, the effect of democracy was felt very early, right? And the army never got politicized, ever. It could have gone the same way as the Pakistan army. But in India, it didn't happen. I think you've got to give a lot of credit to the commanders of that time, maybe to the political leadership of that time, or the trends of that time. Because today the army is seething, let me tell you. Army is unhappy. No, we are unhappy because the army is not being treated well. Let me take it. Let me, let me be very frank on it, right? One rank, one pension, there's that, all kinds of issues. 7th Pay Commission coming out. And I can tell you the 7th Pay Commission is not going to be fair to the army. Not at all. I hope that anomaly of 31,000 rupees in Siachen and 71,000 rupees in Gohati is going to be overcome. I hope so. Well, it will create a lot of problems otherwise. But having said that, at the end of the day, we came from the same stock. The Baluchi, the West Punjabi Musliman, the Sikh, the Jat, the Rajput, we are from the same stock. Everyone. But they turn out to be different and we turn out to be different. Psychologically, I think it is the effect of the land of India. It's the land of India. With the, hat travel, the effect traveled on the mind of the, of the army. Very large. I mean, give credit to the fact I call it the Ganga Jamna Tezib. Fascinating culture of Abad, UP, these areas where we found the syncretic culture of the combination of the Hindu and the Muslim. Right? The North and the South, the Dravidian and the Aryan, everything combined together is a syncretic culture which was developed slowly over a period of time. I think that is the strength of India. You meddle with that and you weaken India completely. Pakistan, on the other hand, I think just believed in the power of violence to be able to overcome every solution, every situation. And it got the better of them. They tasted power very early, the Pakistan army, 1958, they tasted power. And they have never lost power since then. Today, Pakistan is a democracy. But you know who controls the foreign policy, who controls the security policy of Pakistan, you know very well. If you read the most important book to read today on Pakistan, note it down, is by a book by a lady called Christine Fair. Christine Fair. C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E. Christine Fair. F-A-I-R. <clears throat> the book is called the Pakistan Army's way of war. It starts with, it, the, the top title is Fighting to the End. Fighting to the End, the Pakistan Army's way of war. You read that book, you will get all your answers on the mindset, psychology, psychology of the what Pakistan What kind of uh, role should yeah. India play in Afghanistan in the next five, ten years? Uh, and my second question is, uh, sir, uh, how do we deal with Pakistan? I mean, uh, does dialogue serve any purpose? The second part? If sir, dialogue with Pakistan, does that serve purpose? Okay. okay. The first part, how do you deal with Afghanistan? It's a natural, uh, with Afghanistan we have had what is called a historic relationship, right? It's the same way with Iran. We say we've got a civilizational relationship with Iran. But people got fed up of the civilizational relationship because it wouldn't move forward. Finally, when Modi visited, when Modi ji visited Tehran, finally this Chabahar agreement, the trilateral agreement and all this has put together our, our relationship with Iran on a different pedestal. Good relationship with Iran is now traveling on to Afghanistan. One aspect of Afghanistan you got to remember. Last year, 2014, when 
um, when the new president, not new president, Ashraf Ghani, when Ashraf Ghani came to power, <coughs> Ashraf Ghani did one fatal error. He decided to ignore India. He went to Beijing, went to Slavabad, Washington, London, Paris, Bonn, or the Berlin, seventh capital, he visited Delhi. India is not relevant, we don't have a border with India. Forgetting one thing, the relationship between Afghanistan and India is the relationship of Kabuliwala. Understand? The relationship of Kabuliwala. India, Tagore, Ramindanath Tagore's book remembers Kabuliwala. It's a human relationship. It's not the political relationship or boundary based relationship which Pakistan has got with Afghanistan. It's a human relationship. Which is why, more than anything, the $2 billion of soft power which India has invested in Afghanistan, we will get the dividends of that back. This, that is our relationship. Now that we have got, and hopefully we will have in the next two to three, four, five years, a connectivity from Chabahar through railway into the quadrilateral, the northwestern quadrilateral of Afghanistan, the area of um, Kandahar, not Kandahar, Herat and that area. Economics, Afghanistan will have much greater dependency on India. We have a great India-Iran-Afghanistan relationship. And what Pakistan has been denying to us for 25 years, the connectivity to Central Asia, we can show them two fingers. That is what our relationship with Afghanistan is going to be in the near future. I am a part of the India-Afghanistan Forum. On, as, a, as a member from the Ministry of External Affairs. <coughs> so my stakes are very high in this development of this relationship, right? With Pakistan, I foresee ups and downs of this kind of policy, that, this kind of relationship that we've had over the last two years, ever since the BJP government came to power. Attempts made by our Prime Minister. You saw the 25th December visit, Bon Homi, etc. Within six days, everything gone. This will come back. It will come back. It took many years after 26-11 for the relationship to be established. It will come back again after Pathan Court. Then one more thing will happen somewhere. Then it will go back again. When you read this book, Christine Fair's book, you will understand the stakes for the Pakistan army are that they have to remain in power. To remain in power, India has to be an enemy. If India remains, becomes a friendly state, Pakistan army cannot hold the power anymore. Thank you very much. I'd like to invite Shobhik Mathur to felicitate you and post that. Uh, some part of me probably says we can have a group picture with you on a national anthem followed with that, which could be a persuasion. And, uh...